Hi, my name is Keegan Tawa, and today I'll be giving you a status update on my software project, Pisces. Pisces stands for Procedural Iterative Stellar Evolution Simulation. If you're not familiar with the project, you can check out some of my previous videos to learn a little bit more about the software. In the past, our updates have been focused primarily on the galactic and solar views of the software. As you might remember, Pisces allows a user to traverse a randomly generated galaxy and descend into randomly generated solar systems. The galactic and solar views have been the emphasis of my past two updates. The subject of today's update will be Pisces planetary system. Pisces can contain millions of solar systems, and each of these solar systems may contain dozens of planetary bodies. Each of these planetary bodies contains an abundance of chronologically organized information about the planet's material composition, its geothermal activity, its atmospheric profile, its ecologies and biomes, and the species, societies, and civilizations that might flourish there. Visiting a singular planet in Pisces can sometimes generate gigabytes of data. If we want to visualize this data, we'll need some sort of planetary framework to project the information onto. If you remember, Pisces is a procedural piece of software. That means it only exposes as much detail as is required to satisfy the user's observational experience. We will need our world model to satisfy this requirement. We want a framework that scales upward in detail as the user draws near, creating only as much information as is required to satisfy the user's experience. In order to create this world model, I decided to try out using a procedural, asymmetrical, Icosphere. An icosphere is a polyhedron created by fractally recursing the triangular sides of an icosahedron. The icosahedron is one of the five platonic solids. A platonic solid is a polyhedron whose faces are all the same shape. There are only five platonic solids in the entire universe, and the 20-sided icosahedron is the largest of them, making it a pretty special shape. The icosahedron also has a number of interesting relationships with the golden ratio and is a frequent subject in sacred geometry for its unique properties. The icosahedron is of particular interest to us because we can subdivide each of its 20 triangular faces into four smaller triangular faces. This gives us a more spherical polyhedron with 80 triangular faces. We can then do the same operation again subdividing each of those 80 faces into 320 triangular faces. We can do this as many times as we want, each time producing a more detailed and more spherical shape known as an icosphere. Here is the Pisces icosphere with a recursion level of zero. Here's the icosphere uniformly recursed once with 80 faces and now recursed twice with 320 faces. We can continue to recurse this icosphere uniformly as many times as we like, each time getting a more and more spherical shape. For our world model, however, we only want to expand the icosphere in detail directly where the observer is looking and nowhere else. Our worlds, much like the galaxies and solar systems of Pisces, must maintain hierarchical detail. In order to detect this observational region, and for a number of reasons that are going to become clear later on, every single triangular face of our icosphere needs to maintain knowledge of which triangular faces are adjacent to it. While this seems like a straightforward problem, when we begin to recurse the icosphere in an asymmetric manner, it actually becomes one of the more difficult problems we face so far in Pisces development. For our triangles to retain knowledge of one another, all triangles must be aware of their parent triangle and their descendant triangles. This means that when we recurse a triangle of the icosphere, even though that triangle may become invisible, obscured by its descendants, we still must retain knowledge of it. This creates a data structure known as a quad tree. For a triangle to discover who its neighbors are, it must ascend the quad tree to its parent's level, fan out to neighboring branches of the tree, and descend those branches until it finds a neighboring triangle of equivalent or lesser recursive depth. Moreover, we need not only be able to find a triangle's direct adjacencies, but all of its adjacencies within a given radius. We need to do this not only to determine the observation region, but also because we're going to need this information in order to map the planetary data to the icosphere later on. 
This adjacency search was the most difficult part of developing the world model. The solution I wound up using is a method I call the coupled ring search. Starting at an observational center, which for now we'll call ring one, we fan out and discover all adjacencies, which we will call ring two. Now, starting in ring two, we fan out and find all adjacencies, which we will now call ring one. We then go back to ring one and start this binary process over, leapfrogging outward until we reach the desired radius to discover all triangular adjacencies. Here, you can see the adjacency search in action. This search is happening in real time, activating every time the observation center changes. The highlighted triangles represent the observation region, which we can tweak to any radius we like. With our asymmetrically recursing icosphere and our coupled ring search, we are now ready to recurse the icosphere exclusively in the region of observation. Here, we zoom inward two recursive levels. You can see that as we zoom, triangles break down into finer and finer detail. As we pan right, our region of detail grows. You can see also that if we pull away and zoom in on a region of uneven detail, our adjacency search and our triangular recursions still hold. If we descend numerous recursive levels, you can really start to get a feeling for how much detail we'll be able to generate on these planets. It also really gives you a feeling of descent, like we're moving from orbit down to the surface of an alien world. With this, we've created the preliminary world model that we can use for all planetary bodies in Pisces. We've created a framework and a scaffolding onto which we can project the abstract planetary data contained in Pisces backend data systems. The next step will be to pack up triangles and conceal detail as a user pulls away from a planetary body. After that, it'll simply be a matter of getting the Icospherical World model integrated and installed with Pisces at large, and then finally, we can begin the more exciting work of mapping this abstract planetary data to geometric icospherical maps. Currently, Pisces planetary data is wholly without geometry. The worlds are purely data in the abstract. Generating geographical maps from this random abstract data will be the next big chapter of development for Pisces. If you enjoyed this update, I've created a technical blog about Pisces called Superhedral. You can find it at superhedral.com. On the blog, I dig into a lot more of the technical details and nuts and bolts of the software, getting down to the code level, and sharing some of my best practices and algorithms. The blog also contains a number of more philosophical and personal posts and just some cool nerd stuff that's not related to Pisces at all. Um, so if you're interested in this project, consider subscribing to get more detailed and frequent updates. Thank you for listening.